while um, we wait uh, one more minute now for everybody to bump, pop over from the previous session. So just we just want to give everybody that chance. Maybe in that one minute we're waiting, Michael can show us his giraffe, <laughs> his giraffe dance moves. Which Please have, do show us your giraffe <laughs> dance. Well, I do have to say, you guys spend a lot of time by yourself in the field in some of these uh, uh, exercises, and you got to figure out ways to keep yourself busy. And, and one of those ways is designing effective giraffe interpretive dances. So. <laughs> You can do one now. Oh, you can't. You know, I don't have enough space. I'm sorry, James. I can't pull it off. There's a lot of like splits no, and like flips it. and stuff. No, no. I don't think I can pull it off right now. <laughs> Listen, we're getting great audience here. A hundred people are joining. Please keep up with that interpretive dance. No, there's like a whole costume. There's there's <laughs> even more involved makeup than than you've got on. There's prosthetics. It's a big. It's a song and a dance. It's a production and. I'm not going to do it halfway. I got to do it all the way if I'm going to do it. You know, I, I can respect your artistic <laughs> endeavor. You know, I totally. I'm a purist. It. I'm a purist at heart. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we should get everybody now, and hopefully, everybody should be getting the popover button from the previous session. Sorry again, the previous session I think cut out just a few minutes early. Um, like we said, the folks from GCF are presenting uh, from Africa uh, in different parts where the uh, internet connection is not as stable in some areas. So appreciate everyone bearing with us uh, in this this virtual quarantine world. And uh, let's just, I think we have a hun we have about 200 folks here. So we're only missing like 60 who are probably still popping over. So go ahead and start. And um, Michael, you'll be loading your slides on this one, right? So you don't yes, need sir. me to do it. Yep, I, got right. I just sent you a backup in case things go south. But um, great, I, I'm gonna come and, and let you guys go. Perfect. Awesome. Again, this is uh, Dr. Michael Brown. Thank you so much for being here today. There might be an interpretive dance at the end of this uh, Q and A. <laughs> you gotta stay like stay tuned and see what happens. Um, Dr. Michael Brown is a conservation ecologist and a Joint Conservation Science Fellow with the Giraffe Conservation Foundation and the Smithsonian Conservation Biology Institute. Small titles. Having worked for the last decade on wildlife conservation issues in Africa. Michael brings a passion for conservation and a wealth of experience in both field research and applied quantitative ecology. Through his collaborative efforts with local and international partners, he works to develop intimate understandings of ecosystems that giraffe inhabit and use his understanding to design and execute effective conservation actions. In this talk, he'll be exploring some of the many ways GCF use cutting edge science to design, execute and monitor ambitious forward-thinking conservation action. Very excited. Wonderful, thank you so much. Let me see if I can thank share you. this screen real quick. Da, 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 da. And we are off. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Luciana, and thank you to everyone who's tuned in here. Uh, it's so great to have so many people interested in giraffe and giraffe conservation. I'm really grateful for the opportunity uh, to speak about some of the work we're doing today. Uh, really excited. So over the past three presentations, you've seen some of the great work to conserve giraffe across Africa that's being carried out by GCF. At its core, the Giraffe Conservation Foundation is a science-based organization uh, and as such, we're committed to using the best available data to design, execute, monitor draft conservation initiatives. Effective draft conservation strategies are built on the foundation of solid data, and we work to employ cutting edge science to inform these strategies. So for me personally, uh, by training, I'm a conservation ecologist. So I think a lot about trying to understand relationships among living things in these complicated ecosystems and then figure out a way and identify opportunities to use these understandings with local partners to thoughtfully promote a way for people and giraffe to coexist. Michael. Now, throughout this process, I have become enamored with giraffe. Sorry. Like many of you, no doubt. Oh, no. Bad audio? Yeah, sorry to interrupt you. I just want to, there's the, some feedback 
and your audio just started. Um, I don't know if it's your connection or not, um, but I just wanted to flag it because we're seeing the comments. I could hear it and see the comments come in. Um, it might be uh, perhaps if you want to send me the the sure. presentation, um, I can run it from my computer, and that would increase your bandwidth. You should have it in your okay. Gmail. Let me you go ahead and do that. Um, great. You should have it in I'll your Gmail. Get that right now. Um, go ahead and, and stop sharing, Michael. Um, just um, and then uh, let me queue this up, and you can just talk to the. Oh, sorry, just talk to the folks. Great. Oh, well, I just stopped the sharing. Are folks hearing me well now? Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. I was feeling on too. That's all right. You guys are going to get a uh, an earlier version of the presentation, but uh, it'll still be on point. Um, perfect. So that seems to be the issue it was the uh, screen sharing there. Well, no worries then. So I'm reading the comments now. If any folks have any questions about giraffe ecology right off the bat, I'm happy to handle them as they come in. Well, just just uh, it's just downloading on my end your presentation, Michael. So just give me two more minutes. Perfect. Question regarding research. Here we go, David. Whoop. Um, is there a possibility to participate in DreeCF research as a PhD student from a European university? Um, we're always looking to collaborate with uh, folks across wide ranges of academic academia and, and NGO realms. Um, so, so drop an email. We can see what opportunities are up there, particularly, I mean, funding is always an issue, but um, there's no shortage of ideas and no shortage of questions to ask, as we'll learn in my presentation here. Oh, Sandy, we did check our internet before the presentation. <laughs> Unfortunately, like a lot of folks, um, I'm also sort of in a limited bandwidth area. Um, I live in a small log cabin in Virginia. And when I moved out here, uh, I was actually looking forward to the lack of internet. And since the pandemic, uh, what was once a charming facet of this existence has become a bit more of an inconvenience. So. So a quick reminder that if you'd like to donate to Draft Conservation, Conservation Foundation at any time to this event or after, there's some links um, that have been posted in the chats there. So you guys are welcome to take a go at that and, and look at it. Oh, Ellen, just down the street from me in Front Royal. Is there a new paper coming out soon on giraffe DNA and species? Uh, stay tuned. There may be some stuff in the pipelines. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about any of that stuff yet, but keep your eyes on the on the press. What made you have such an interest in giraffe? Um, well, giraffe are pretty fascinating animals for a lot of different reasons, uh, and the conservation um, actions involved with them are certainly not the least of which. Um, but as, as a species in ecology, giraffe have some really interesting, oh, and we're up and running, um, some really interesting aspects, which hopefully I'll actually talk about in a little bit. Um, so we're going to ease right in here. Um, and James, I will let you know, I'm going to give you a, a shout when it's time to switch uh, slides. So we're back at it now. Thanks guys for your patience. Um, but over the past three presentations, you guys have seen some great work to conserve giraffe across Africa. Now at its core, the Giraffe Conservation Foundation is a science-based organization. And as such, we are committed to using the best available data to design, execute, monitor, uh, and promote giraffe conservation initiatives. Effective conservation strategies are built on foundations of solid data. And we work to employ cutting edge science to inform these strategies. For me personally, by training, I'm a conservation ecologist. So I like to think a lot about trying to understand 
the relationships among living things in these complicated ecosystems. And then figure out a way to identify opportunities to use these understandings with local partners to thoughtfully promote a way for people and giraffe to coexist. And throughout this process, I have become enamored with giraffe, uh, like many of you, no doubt. Uh, next slide. But uh, as it turns out, a uh, fascination with giraffe is certainly not a hu new human phenomenon. Humans have sh been sharing space with giraffe since before humans were actually humans. Uh, giraffe, as we currently know them, appeared in Africa, as Steph said, between you know, one and two million years ago, uh, whereas Homo sapiens are relative newcomers, arising roughly 200,000 years ago. But in these hundreds of thousands of years of shared existence, we've long admired giraffe. We study their natural history through tracking and captured their unique anatomy through ancient rock art, like this carving in Teufelfontein, Namibia. We have admired their ecology and the role that they played in the same ecosystems that nurtured us as a species. But despite this long relationship with this iconic animal, there is still so much we have to learn. And indeed, uh, the knowledge, the need for this knowledge is becoming increasingly more urgent. Next slide, please. Throughout the giraffe's range, landscapes are changing at an unprecedented rate. As Steph, Arthur, and Julian all mentioned, giraffe are facing increasing challenges of urbanization, road, railway, fence development, encroachment of livestock, and illegal hunting. Next slide. But to ensure a sustainable future for these animals and to figure out a better way to coexist with them, we need to develop strategic understandings of giraffe ecology at scales unattainable by our ancestors. By harnessing the latest technology with the most cutting edge scientific methods and combining them with the intimate understandings that can only be developed through boots on the ground field ecology and local partnerships, GCF is pushing the boundaries of data-driven conservation action. Next slide. But understanding the complicated processes uh, of nature is no easy job. Different processes play out over different time scales and different spatial scales. So trying to develop this nuanced understanding of how giraffe interact with their environment is similar in some ways uh, to appreciating uh, a pointless piece of art like this one here. To understand the processes leading to the product to understand the parts that contribute to the whole, next slide, you need, next slide, to look at it, next slide, from multiple perspectives. So next slide here. And similarly, to get an appreciation for giraffe ecology and conservation, we need to study multiple ecological processes on multiple ecological scales. Next slide. Next one. So we can look at the super small scale and ask questions about what an individual giraffe eats, for instance, or we can ask how a giraffe moves around its landscapes. These particular processes play out over the span of a day to a week to a season, and they largely focus on how individual giraffes interact with their environment. Next one. We can also look at how a population grows or changes its distribution over time. In conservation, the metrics we are often interested in are maximizing population growth or stability. All we do, all the work we do, really is to serve that goal of enhancing population viability. But this is an inherently tricky thing to try to measure. These particular processes play out over years and decades. And as such, they require dedicated methods and commitment to, to effectively monitor. Next slide. It's also important to zoom out even further to identify comparative population trends, threats, and conservation opportunities at a global scale. How are different giraffe doing in different countries and different regions? This approach allows us to think big and figure out how we can maximize our impact for all giraffe. Next slide. So in the remainder of this presentation, we'll be exploring all of these scales, but before we delve into these techniques, 
I want to make sure you appreciate the diversity of landscapes that giraffe currently inhabit. As we've discussed before, giraffe can be found in over 20 different countries across a huge swath of sub-Saharan Africa. This range encompasses diverse habitat types, governments, policies, uh, and, and cultural practices. Next slide. We can see some of the diversity of these giraffe habitats through these next couple pictures. From the arid scrub of the Kanene region in Uganda, next slide, to the rugged savannas of northeastern Uganda, next slide. From the barren pans of Atosha National Park, next one, to the acacia woodlands of Murchison Falls National Park, next. Giraffe live in diverse landscapes each with unique challenges and unique conservation opportunities. So there is no one conservation silver bullet. There's no one size fits all solution. But the key is in identifying ecological touch points and principles that can inform and evaluate local efforts uh, and then share these lessons learned across multiple locations. Next. So we work really hard to help achieve these ambitious scientific and conservation goals. Uh, and as an organization, uh, we can do a lot. Uh, but as we've discussed before, the real power in these efforts, next slide, is in the collaborative nature of our work. We work with a wide range of partners in academia, in NGOs, with local governments, and in zoos and other research institutions. Uh, to make sure that we have the appropriate scientific capacity and local engagement to do the right job. Next slide. And we also work very closely with dedicated rangers, scientists, communities, administrators, all of them working hard in the protected areas and communities where giraffe live. Their contributions to giraffe conservation are immense the scales of giraffe ecology that I discussed before uh, and explain how they all fit together to inform conservation action. So we'll start with one of the smaller scales, uh, foraging ecology. What do giraffe eat and why do they eat the things they eat? So behaviorally, giraffes spend most of their days eating and resting. So it stands to reason that you can't truly understand giraffe without understanding the plants they consume. Food is one of the most critical resources for sustaining viable giraffe populations in the wild. Uh, so we work to understand what giraffe eat and why they eat them. Next slide. So click on it again. This one's a quick video. Perfect. They use their 20 inch tongues and dexterous lips to forage of their African habitats. They spend most of their days stripping up to 75 pounds of leaves, seeds, flowers, and bark from woody vegetation. Like cows or goats, uh, giraffe are ruminants with multi-chambered stomachs and specialized gut microbiomes that allow them to digest plants. Uh, Uh, but it turns out the decisions of what to eat are pretty complicated out on the savanna. Uh, there are lots of different plants to choose from. Some have really nasty thorns. Some of them are toxic. Some of them have real big juicy leaves. Some of them have real small waxy leaves. And they all have different nutritional properties. So how do we figure out how the giraffe make these decisions of what to eat? Uh, well, the techniques can range from the really low tech but labor intensive so following a giraffe around in a land cruiser and identifying every plant they eat and counting every bite of every plant they eat. Uh, or we can take a really high tech approach, like taking their droppings to a laboratory uh, and looking at the DNA of the different plant particles in droppings to identify the actual species and the diet composition. We can then do nutritional analyses on the plant items themselves 
to figure out the molecular components that make them so appetizing to giraffe. So what are we finding here? Time and time again, we see the importance of diverse plant communities for sustaining giraffe. Like you or I, giraffe need a balanced diet and they need lots of choices to achieve that balance. In the different ecosystems across Africa, giraffe have been identified eating dozens of different plant species. But generally, regardless of where they are, they typically have five to 10 plant species that are their favorites. So as we look to preserve giraffe habitats, ensuring that there's enough quantity of a diverse range of high quality woody vegetation is key and ensuring that they have access to sort of the nutritionally balanced diet in the right appropriate amounts is really important. So the next slide. Oh, try it again. Okay, so we know that giraffe like to eat diverse types of woody vegetation in different ratios, but these plants aren't distributed evenly over space. In the savannas, there are often patches of woodland interspersed with patches of grassland. So these plants aren't distributed evenly in time either. These environments often experience dramatic changes between wet and dry seasons, which can impact the quality of the habitat. Uh, like those in the more temperate environments, some of you guys experience winter and autumn uh, where leaves fall off of trees. There's dry seasons where leaves fall off of trees in some of these tropical environments. So additionally, giraffe make movement decisions based on a lot of other factors too. How to avoid people and predators, how to avoid roads, uh, and how to find other giraffe, just to name a few. So understanding how giraffe move around their environment is absolutely essential to figuring out the key habitat features that they need, and then figuring out ways to protect and access those resources. Next slide. To do this, we've developed a groundbreaking new study, which we've dubbed the Twiga Tracker Initiative. It's an ambitious conservation research program designed to develop a deeper understanding of giraffe spatial ecology and movement decisions across diverse habitat types throughout Africa. Over the past five years or so, a growing network of research partners spearheaded by the Giraffe Conservation Foundation has worked to design and deploy hundreds of GPS units on giraffe across Africa, from the hyper-arid deserts from Northwest Namibia to the mesic savannas of Northeast uh, Uganda. We're working to identify critical habitat features for giraffe. Next slide. So how does this work? We've identified uh, the need to track giraffe, uh, but as you can imagine, Giraffe's form makes it a little more difficult to use the conventional GPS tracking. You can't really fit a collar on a giraffe the same way you would for a zebra or a wildebeest, for instance. Uh, so we've worked with some developers to design specific uh, units, which we call ASA units, which are about the size of a deck of cards. They're solar charged and they're mounted onto a giraffe ASA cone. These units collect the giraffe location at about hourly intervals and they beam them up to your Iridium satellite network uh, and then beam them down to laptops or smartphones anywhere in the world. So we can track giraffe locations in the middle of the bush from our laptops in real time. Next one. Before we deploy these units, however, we wanna make sure that we uh, effectively think through every aspect of the study to maximize the utility. So we look at site-specific management priorities, working with our local partners to identify what they wanna learn from these data on the ground. Site-specific research objectives, so working with local researchers to try to figure out new and interesting ways to use that local understanding of that particular system to learn something new about giraffe. And then we also incorporate it in this continental scale movement ecology study, dumping all the data into a single database and analyzing it all together so we can compare how giraffe are moving in these very different habitats. Next slide. So to date, we've deployed over 225 units. It's over eight countries, all four species of giraffe. We've collected nearly 2 million points of giraffe data. And although this research is relatively new, these data are already telling us incredible things about how giraffe are navigating their environments. Next. Next slide. Back one. 
So by overlaying these giraffe locations and movements on satellite imagery, we can identify hotspots, which represent places where giraffe are spending a lot, there you go, lots of their time. Uh, here the hotspots are identified in red. These are the high quality resource areas that deserve special attention and special protection to ensure that giraffe have adequate resources. Equally importantly, we can identify the paths uh, and habitats, the corridors that giraffe use to move between these hotspots uh, and protect these corridors to make sure that giraffe can move around the landscape. Maintaining access to these corridors in seasonally changing environments is a hard thing to study, but these GPS units where we can track multiple giraffe simultaneously are giving us insights that we previously never imagined. Next slide. Whoop. <laughs> Next. So additionally, we're working, next slide. James, I'm looking for a slide where there's a bunch of people standing in the back of a pickup truck looking at a giraffe. So additionally, we're working with partners to develop tools that allow rangers to access these locations in real time. We have specially developed apps that allow rangers to track locations from their smartphones, enabling them to target their patrols and anti-poaching efforts and their conservation activities uh, to the locations where giraffe actually are. We can use these tools also with geofencing. So as a giraffe crosses a boundary that we've put on a map, just some digital map, uh, and a giraffe walks across, across this imaginary boundary, it can send us alerts via WhatsApp in real time. So we can see when giraffe are, for instance, leaving protected areas, or when a giraffe on the border of Uganda crosses into South Sudan and mobilize rangers to effectively take conservation action. And this has proven immensely valuable for giraffe